welcome back to Bridge to Terabithia. We are on page 69 at the top. Remember yesterday he had just said, still it took him a few days to feel, feel comfortable around Leslie's father. Part of the problem was he didn't know what to call him. Hey, he'd say, and both Leslie and her father would turn around. Uh, Mr. Burke. Would what? <sighs> Onomatopoeia is... I don't know that I, you know, that's a good question. I don't know that I would consider a, a word that, that makes a sound like boom, bang, clang, zoom, whoosh would be on a monopia. Um, for lack of a better example, a sound people might make would be like or or um, those kinds of things. We're I was giving you the example of it. So those would be th sounds that people make, but for the most part, talking about a sound, it's like, um, like a bird, or, um, woof, like a dog, that kind of thing. Does that make sense? Okay. That was a good question. What does what mean? Where is it at? It's chomp, like oh, okay. chomp, chomp, chomp. Okay. Good question, though. All right. I wish you'd call me Bill, Jess. Yeah, he fumbled around with the name for a couple more days, but it came more easily with practice. It also helped to know some things that Bill, for all his brains and books, didn't know. Sorry, I have my emails flashing at me. Um, Jess found he was really useful to him. Not a nuisance to be tolerated or set out on the porch like PT. You're amazing, Bill would say. Where did you learn that, Jess? Jess never quite knew how he knew things. So he'd just shrug and let Bill and Leslie praise him to each other. Though the work itself was praise enough. First, they ripped out the boards that covered the ancient fireplace coming upon the rusty bricks like prospectors upon the mother load. Next, they got the old wallpaper off the living room wall, all five garish layers of it. Sometimes, as they lovingly patched and painted, they listened to Bill's records or sing. Leslie and Jess teaching Bill some of Mrs. Ed Miss Edmonds' songs and Bill teaching them some he knew. At other times, they would talk. Jess listened wonderingly as Bill explained things that were going on in the world. If Mama could hear him, she'd swear he was another Walter Cronkite instead of some hippie. All the Burks were smart. Not smart maybe about fixing things or growing things, but smart in a way Jess had never known real, pe real live people to be. Like one day while they were working, Judy came down and read aloud, out loud to them mostly poetry and some of it in Italian, which of course Jess couldn't understand. But he buried his head in the rich sound of the words and let himself be wrapped warmly around in the feel of the Burke's brilliance. They painted the living room gold. Leslie and Jess had wanted blue, but Bill held out for gold, which turned out to be so beautiful 
that they were glad they had given in. The sun would slant in from the west in the late afternoon until the room was brimful of light. What does brimful mean? Brimful, like, okay, so... If I filled my water, let me switch it out. Hang on. I'm going to put the taller one in there. If I filled my water all the way up to the brim, it's like that tall. So the brim is the very tippy, tippy, tippy part of the glass. Brim is a fish? Oh. So if I fill it up to the brim, it's right up to the tippy tippy tap with water. So if it's a, if it's, um, so what did they, how did they put it? They said it was a brim full of light. So it'd be all the way up to the top with light. Ooh, don't don't spill Miss Richardson. Don't 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 spill Miss Richardson. Not bad. Good job, Miss Richardson. Okay. Good question. Yep. Can I ask what that means? Nuisance. Nuisance means like a troublemaker. Oh. A pest. So like, um, when I'm sitting down and somebody stands up in front of me, I consider it a nuisance. Good question. That makes sense. Yeah. It's both the same. So, Bill's saying to Jess, I wish you'd call me Bill, Jess. So that's regular print. It looks a little bit different, maybe because it's capitalized in the fonts, but it's normal font. Good question. What well, your sister is a nuisance. He just made a connection. Garish? Um, garish is like ugly or hideous. So like if you're looking... Like, I don't know if you've ever taken wallpaper off before or if you've taken carpet out and there's carpet underneath and it's ugly, like really ugly, we call it garish. Good question. So some hippie means, remember, his mom considers Ben and his wife hippies, right? So, in this case, it's almost derogatory, meaning, like, it's a slam. So, like, because, like, calling somebody who's African American by the N word that I'm not going to say. Um, it's, you know, so it's, in, in a way, it's like a devaluation. Like, have you ever heard somebody say, what, what does it matter, he's just a kid? Yeah. So they're really saying that what you think and what you feel doesn't matter, right? Now, is that the truth? Yeah. 
No, because you guys have thoughts, you have feelings, you have emotions, and it matters. It doesn't matter if you're 2, 22, 92, or 102, but you feel matters, right? So, so they're like, oh, they're just some hippie. And what Jess, so that's what Jess's mom would say. And Jess is like, well, I wish she would see him now because she wouldn't think he's just some hippie now because he's really smart. Does that make sense? Good question. Okay, so So like have has mom ever taken to get ice cream? What? Have you ever gone to get ice cream? What's your favorite kind? If if you can if you could get any kind of ice cream at the ice cream store and money was no no you could spend as much money at the ice cream store as you want you can get whatever ice cream you want what kind of ice cream would you get? I mean, it'd be vanilla now. It'd be vanilla with what? With sprinkles. So vanilla with sprinkles. Would you get a small, a medium, a large? Get a small okay. So my friend says, Miss Richardson. If I had my choice, I would get a small vanilla waffle cone with sprinkles. And let's say his mom says, well, I only have this much money and you can't get your sprinkles or your waffle cone. And then, and then this friend, just play with it. And the friend says, well, that's okay, mom. I really don't need any ice cream after all. And mom's like, well, but I really wanted to get you ice cream. Well, but my favorite ice cream is a small vanilla in a waffle cone with sprinkles. It's my second favorite. What's your first favorite? Um, they don't have any elephant ear. Elephant ear ice cream? Yeah. With what? It's, it's basically just vanilla with chunks of elephant ear in it. It's delicious. So elephant ear in a waffle cone, a small elephant ear in a waffle cone? Okay, so for instance, my friend says my favorite ice cream is a small elephant ear and a waffle cone. Am I right now? And mom's like, well, son, so sorry. They only have, sm I can get you a small vanilla waffle cone with sprinkles. And he's like, no thanks, mom. I really just wanted a small elephant ear today. All right, so mom's like, oh, but I really want to get you ice cream. And you're like, well, I really just. So mom's like, you know what, I'll tell you what. Let's see if we can find another place that has the elephant ear. And so you would hold out, not get ice cream that day. And maybe mom calls around and goes, hey, do you have elephant ear? Hey, do you have elephant ear? And then you get to go somewhere else and you get your small elephant ear and a waffle cone. That's called holding out. I seen it on grandparents day at um at the ice cream shop and he had vanilla with sprinkles. Vanilla sprinkles. Now my sister, a better example would be my sister would put hundreds of dollars of clothing in a cart. Oh, going we're going back to school shopping. My mom only has so much money to buy back to school clothing for both of us, right? Well, no, but still, let's let's pretend. So Miss Richardson found a pair of pants and I found a shirt and I put them in the cart. And my mom looks at my sister's overflowing cart and says, I I really just can't get everything for you. You're gonna have to make some choices. So my sister's game she would play as well, if I can't have everything, then I'm not going to have anything and I'll put it all back. She was holding out for the whole entire cart. I'm either going to get it all or I'm going to get nothing. That's what my sister's game would play. She was holding out. Now most of the time if you're holding out, like, 
Maybe you're holding out for your favorite kind of ice cream. Maybe mom says, hey, do you want to go to McDonald's today? Well, no, you really didn't want to go to McDonald's today. You really want to go to KFC or Taco Bell or something like that, and you're holding out for it. Um, sometimes I go to Hearthstone and, it doesn't have, and they don't have coconut cream pie. <sighs> So then I have to decide, do I want my second favorite or third favorite pie, or am I going to hold out until next time and get pie the next time? Holding out. Does that make sense now? Good question. Cronkite. Um, Justice wonderingly as Bill explained things that are going on in the world. If Mama could hear him, she'd swear he was another Walter Cronkite instead of some hippie. Yes. And I don't think it's using like, as, or then, which would mean it would be a bingo, baby. So, when your little sister does what? What bothers you that your little sister does? She screams. She's sassy. So, you're annoyed because your little sister is... Thank you. You're annoyed because your little sister's screaming and she's really sassy today. And you're like, seriously, shut up, sister. Is that what you get to do? Or would you get in trouble if you said, seriously, shut up, little sister? Probably get in trouble, right? And if you yell back, what's going to happen? Do you get in trouble if you start yelling back? So sometimes you just have to tolerate it. Let it go, tolerate it, yeah. Yeah, so, so sometimes, sometimes tolerating is the, is the right thing to do, or letting it go, sometimes that's the right thing to do, and sometimes it's not, because if somebody's behaving badly in here and I tolerate it, what am I telling you? keep doing it it's okay I don't have a problem with it and if I tolerate something and I have an issue with it it's to build up and then I get crabbier and crabbier right yeah so as long as like generally speaking as long as they're not doing a bunch of fidgeting now have you noticed the one thing I don't really have in here I don't have balls why don't I have balls No, I might be puking. When you, when you guys start doing this little jazz on a ball, like bouncy, 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 my stomach goes boom, 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 and then all of a sudden I might be doing thunk, 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 thunk in the trash. Do you know what I'm saying? So I just don't have kids with bouncy balls in here, like, but you know what I'm saying, right? So if you've ever seen me, if you've ever seen me, in another classroom where you have cardio balls in there, I will say, don't bounce. No, I'm serious. Don't bounce. You need to stop bouncing. I'm going to start throwing up in a minute if you don't stop. Yeah. Yep. So, Miss Miss Taylor lets kids bring in their own balls. Now, I brought my own ball in here before. And I'm fine with it because it's not like I sit there and I bounce and I bounce and I bounce. I just sit there on the ball, right? But other kids, bouncy, 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 and it makes me sick, and I don't tolerate that very well. And you probably wouldn't tolerate me blowing chunks either, would you? No. You fill your chocolate milk to the brim. Good connection. Oh, 
Yep. You look, I'm calling on the next person. Okay. I got it. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, good connection. So my other, that would be a for you. Uh, my other friend wanted to know prospector. Prospector, the best way to talk about prospector is when they go prospecting for gold. So a lot of times you'll see a prospector and they'll be looking for gold. So they'll go out, they'll take a pan, they'll scoop up some water and some stuff on the bottom and they prospect. So they shake it, they swirl it, they shake it, they swirl it. And I think, I believe gold is a little bit lighter so it'll either sink or float I'm not sure and so then you know as you get the whatever out then you're left with flecks of gold or chunks of gold depending on what you picked up I think it does sink and I think it might be a lot heavier than stone or sand or something like that um, so then you just keep swooshing it and then eventually so prospecting is like digging for like it's that's panning for gold or mining for gold but prospecting in this case it was like coming upon rusty bricks like like prospectors upon the mother load the mother load they're talking about is the mother load of uh, gems or jewels or gold or something like that Okay, so what, where, where are you at again? What paragraph? Second full paragraph? And where did you start with? Not finding it. Oh, it's farther down than I thought. Thank you. Um, yeah, so some of this is definitely going to be personification. You can bury something. Um, so Barry wouldn't necessarily just be, I don't think that would have necessarily been personification, but um, let himself be wrapped warmly around in the feel of the Burke's brilliance, wrapped warmly around. He's not getting really wrapped up warmly, um, so that would be personification. So that would be a... Okay. Um, why is there a hyphen after other Because it's like a pause. Kind of like a pause, like a pause. Oh. Go ahead. So, it says, let go and let me praise him to each other. Really. So Though the work itself was praise enough. You're really close. You're like super close. Watch what happens. Look. 
You're amazing, Bill would say. Where did you learn that, Jess? Jess never quite knew how he knew things, so he'd shrug and let Bill and Jess praise, praise him to each other. Do we need the rest of it? No. Though the work itself was praise enough, you don't need that. So what happens is, is that when we don't need something, we set it off with a hyphen. In this case, there's not an ending with a hyphen because it's at the end. But a lot of times if it's in the middle, they would do a hyphen and then they give you a phrase and then a hyphen. And then you could just put your finger over and take it out and you don't need that. It's not necessary for your thing. I will give you a for trying to answer that and a for asking the question. Good connection. It is a certain person. Let me see if I can find Walter Cronkite for you. Uh oh. This is my my last broadcast of the Anchor Man of the CBS Evening News. For me, it's a moment for which I long have planned, but which nevertheless comes with some sadness. This is my almost two decades. After all, we've been meeting like this in the evenings, and I'll miss that. My last broadcast is the anchor man of the CBS Evening News. For me, it's a moment for which I long have planned, but which nevertheless comes with some sadness. For almost two decades, after all, we've been meeting like this in the evenings, and I'll miss that. But those who have made anything of this departure, I'm afraid, have made too much. This is but a transition, right. a passing so of the baton. So that kind of gives you an idea great broadcaster and gentleman, of Walter Doug Edwards, Cronkite. Preceded so that me is in this Walter Cronkite. Another Dan he Rather was will a and anyway, the person who sits here is obviously the most an evening news person for a superb I think team. he said what two decades, which would be like twenty years on CBS, the evening news. No, a decade is ten. I believe he said didn't he say two decades? I think that's what he said. So yeah, so he was on there for twenty years. So the, I just wanted you to see a picture. So he, um, like, uh, one of the other ones, one of the other one, other movies was he told, oh, here it is, the JFK assassination. So this is a picture of, um, so this was John F. Kennedy died. Um, he, um, I don't know if it's going to load or not. Nope, it's not. Um, so, it's not going to load for me now. But that gives you at least an idea of what like, what he looked like, da 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 da. Okay? Good question. Here we go. Fine. You know, he probably heard him on other things. Finally, Bill rented a sander from Millsburg Plaza and they took off the took off the black floor paint down to the wide oak boards and refurnished refinish them. No rugs, Bill said. No, agreed Judy. It'd be like putting a veil on the Mona Lisa. When Bill and the children had finished razor blading the last bits of paint off the windows and washed the panes, they called Judy down from her upstairs study to come and see. The four of them sat down on the floor and gazed around. It was gorgeous. Leslie gave a deep, satisfied sigh. Oh, I love this room, she said. Don't you feel the golden enchantment of it? It is worth, it is worthy to be. Jess looked up in sudden alarm. In a palace, relief. In such a mood, a person might even let a sworn secret slip. Oh. Because he thought Leslie was going to be talking about 
Terabithia, right? Um, Terabithia. But she had not even to Bill and Judy, and he knew how she felt about her parents. She must have seen his anxiety because she winked at him across Bill and Judy, just as he sometimes winked at Maybelle over Joyce Ann's head. Terabithia was still just for the two of them. The next afternoon, they called P.T. and headed for Terabithia. It had been more than a month since they had been there together, and, they, and as they neared the creek bed, they slowed down. Jess wasn't sure he still remembered how to be a king. We've been away for many years, Leslie was whispering. How do you suppose the king has fared in our absence? Where have we been? Conquering the hostile savages on our northern borders, she answered. But the lines of communication have been broken, and thus we do not have tidings of our beloved homeland for many a full moon. How was that for a regular queen? Jess wished he could match it. You think anything bad has happened? PT? PT is an abbreviation and short for Prince Tarion, isn't it? Okay. Yes. It would be like putting a veil in the Mona Lisa as a simile. Good job. It reminds you of Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Good connection. What secret thing? Where are you at? The one secret what? A sworn secret slip. That would be alliteration. Good job. Um, it, it's a question. Isn't the Mona Lisa um, painting worth millions of dollars? It is a painting worth millions of dollars. You are right. Good job. Sometimes hostile people can go to jail, but hostile means, like, very mad, right? yeah. yeah, very mad, like, um, they have, like, something called a hostile takeover, so if you don't want somebody to take over your company and somebody does it anyways, it could be a hostile takeover. It's kind of like it's aggressive. Um, does that help? Dogs welcome, humans tolerated, yes. Yeah, as long as you're not chit-chatting and you're not too much moving. All right, we must have courage, my king. It may indeed be so. They swung silently across the creek bed. On the farther bank, Leslie picked up two sticks. Thy sword, sire, she whispered. Just nodded. They hunched down and crept towards the stronghold like police detectives on TV. Hey, queen, watch out behind you. Leslie whirled and began to duel the imaginary foe. Then more came rushing upon them, and the shouts of the battle rang through Terabithia. The guardian of the realm raced about in happy puppy circles, too young as yet to comprehend the danger that surrounded them all. They have sounded the retreat, the brave queen cried. Yay! 
Drive them out utterly so they may never return and prey on our people. Out you go. Out, out, out. All the way to the creek bed, they forced the enemy back, sweating under their winter jackets. At last, Terabithia is free once more. The king sat down on a log and wiped his face, but the queen did not let him rest long. Sire, we must go at once to the grove of the pines and give thanks for our victory. Just followed her into the grove, where they stood silently in the dim light. Who do we think? he whispered. The question flickered across her face. Oh, God, she began. She was more at home with magic than religion. O oh, spirits of the grove, thy right arm has given us the victory. He couldn't remember where he'd heard that one, but it seemed to fit. Leslie gave him a look of approval. She took up the swords. Now grant protection to Terabithia and to all its people and to us, its rulers. Yes. So they're comparing hunching down and creeping toward the stronghold like police detectives. Yeah. Good connection. All right, good connection. Uh, Just tried not to smile. And to the to its puppy. And to Prince Terry and its guardian and jester. Amen. Amen. They both managed to somehow keep the giggles buttoned in until they got out of the sacred place. A few days after the encounter with the enemies of Terabithia, they had an encounter of a different sort at school. Leslie came out at recess to tell Jess that she had started into the girls' room only to be stopped by the sound of crying from one of the stalls. She lowered her voice. This sounds crazy, she said, but from the free feet, I'm pretty sure it's Janice Avery in there. You're kidding. The picture of Janice Avery crying on... The toilet seat was too much for Jess to imagine. Well, she's the only one in the school who has that has Willard Hughes's name crossed out on her sneakers. Besides, the smoke is so thick in there you need a gas mask. Are you sure she was crying? Jess Aarons, I can tell if someone's crying or not. My, what was the matter with him? Janice Avery had given him nothing but trouble, and now he was feeling responsible for her like one of the Burke's timber wolves or beached whales. She didn't even cry when kids teased her about Willard after the note. Yeah, I know. He looked at her, well, what should we do? Do, she asked? What do you mean, what should we do? How could he explain it to her? Leslie, if she was an animal predator, we'd be obligated, obliged to help her, to try to help her. Leslie gave him a funny look. A rue would be on a monopia. Well, you're the one who's always telling me I gotta care, he said. But Janice Avery? If she's crying, there's gotta be something really wrong. Well, what are you planning to do? He flushed. I can't go into no girl's room. Oh, I get it. You're gonna send me into the shark's jaws. No, thank you, Mr. Aarons. Leslie, I swear, I'd go in there if I could. He really thought he would, too. You ain't scared of her, are you, Leslie? He didn't mean it in the daring way. He was just dumbfounded by the idea of Leslie being scared. She flashed her eyes at him and tossed her head back in that proud way she had. Okay, I'm going in. But I want you to know, Jess Aarons, I think it's the dumbest idea you have you ever had in your life. He crept down the hall after her and hid behind the nearest alcove to the girl's room door. 
He ought to at least to be there to catch her when Janice kicked her out. Excuse me. There was a quiet moment after the door swung shut behind Leslie. Then he heard Leslie saying something to Janice. Next, a string of cuss words, which were too loud to be blurred by the, the closed door. This was followed by some loud sobbing, not Leslie's, thank, the goodness, thank goodness, and some sobbing and talking mixed up and the bell. He couldn't be caught staring at the door of a girl's room, but how could he leave? He'd be deserting in the line of fire. The rush of kids into the building settled it. He let himself be caught up in the stream and made his way to the basement steps, his brain still swirling with the sounds of cussing and sobbing. Back in the fifth grade classroom, he kept his eyes glued on the door for Leslie. He half expected to see her come through the flat and straight out like the coyote on Red Run Road Runner. So, you know, Road Runner, the coyote gets hit by the anvil and then he's flat. He half, he half expected to see her come through flat and straight out like the coyote on Road Runner. But she came in smiling without so much as a black eye. She walked over to Mrs. Myers and whispered her excuse for being late. And Mrs. Myers beamed at her with what was becoming known as the Leslie Burke Special. And we'll talk to you later. We'll pick it up there tomorrow. Bye. Go.